20 of Project E55 ASL and it's finally time to start work on the bodywork of the car. So in this video I'm going to be starting off by making the rear diffuser and then also getting to making the floor of the car. So for making this rear diffuser and the floor and actually all the rest of the bodywork too I'm going to be using carbon fiber. So the final body panels are going to look something like this. It's going to be two layers of carbon fiber with a foam core in the middle. So this is the foam core that goes in the middle. Um, it's actually like a special type of foam that it's actually meant for being used with carbon fiber. So basically the material you end up with is extremely lightweight and it's ridiculously strong at the same time. So um, that's why this is actually the preferred um, choice of material for most race cars when you look at how the bodywork is made. So I've spent the last few days experimenting with carbon fiber. So I was making different pieces of carbon fiber and then um, yeah, just clamping them from this end and pulling them with a the cable from this end and seeing how much force I actually need to break this material. And uh, what I found after experimenting a bunch of these pieces is that, well, the preferred choice of most of my bodywork is gonna be this one. It's just one layer of carbon fiber on both sides with a foam core in the middle. Uh, I was only concerned about bending forces because that's the type of force that my bodywork is gonna be under. It's gonna be clamped to the chassis from one end and then the aerodynamic forces are obviously gonna try to bend it from the other end and I need to make sure that the material is strong enough to actually not bend under like whatever forces it's going to be under. So for most of the bodywork, I'm going to be going with this one. It's just one layer on both sides, but for other parts that actually do need to be stronger, I'm going to be going with this one. This one is two layers on one side and just one layer on the other side. You might ask why not pile the two layers on both sides? Well, th the thing that I found out was that the bottom side actually turns out to be the weaker one. So no matter how many layers you pile on the top side, it doesn't really matter. Um, even if it's two layers on the top and two layers at the bottom, it still results to the same strength because the bottom side is the one that fails first. I also tried vacuum bagging versus non-vacuum bagging, but I'm not going to be going with vacuum bag because what I found out was that the vacuum bagged pieces were only one gram lighter than the non-vacuum bagged ones and the strength turned out to be the exact same. So that was a really small amount of difference to justify the extra amount of effort required to vacuum bag it. Um, you might ask how much does that equate to for the entire bodywork of the car. So I already did the math behind that and if I vacuum bag the entire bodywork of the car, it's going to help me save 2.2 kilograms over if I was not vacuum bagging it. So yeah, needless to say that's a really small amount of difference to justify all the extra work that is involved in vacuum bagging every single piece. Also talking a bit about the design of the diffuser and the floor in this car and why I designed it the way it is. So basically the floor of the car is pretty much the first thing that I designed even before designing the chassis or anything because the reason is that the bottom side of the chassis had to be shaped according to the floor. So to figure out the floor design I did a bit of CFD early on in the project and but I wasn't too good at CFD so what I also did was I made these um, cardboard cutouts of different floor designs and I made a small wind tunnel in my basement and I basically tested them out and figured out what type of front to rear down force um, different floor designs would lead to and the final floor design I ended up with was this one and the thing about this one is that I get pretty much an even um, downforce at the front tires and the rear tires so the downforce generated underneath the car is pretty much 50% at the front and 50% at the rear. I chose a fairly high downforce number for the front because once the underbody aerodynamics are done it's really hard to get more front downforce so that's why I wanted to get most of the front downforce from underneath the car. But mostly for the shapes of the bodywork itself, I kept the shapes really simple. Like most of them are just fairly flat, simple shapes. Um, this is because this is going to make it really easy for me to actually make these body panels, which you're probably going to see later in this video. So for making these carbon fiber body panels, I'm going to be starting off with this thing. Well, this is carbon fiber cloth, and it's actually a cloth made of um, these fibers, which is, well, carbon fiber. And um, the unique thing about these fibers is that they are actually, they have a ridiculously high amount of tensile strength. So you can pull these things and they will be extremely difficult to break. In fact, they're even stronger than steel in terms of tensile strength. But at the same time, they're extremely brittle. Like if you bend this cloth, you can actually break it just by bending it. And also it has no compressive strength at all. It's just a cloth right now. So to make use of this cloth, what you have to do is you have to mix it with resin. Um, resin is basically, you can think of it as a glue that actually holds all these um, fibers together. And so basically all the compressive strength of the material comes from this glue and all the tensile strength actually comes from the carbon fiber. So that's why they're called composites. They're a mixture of two different materials and the two different materials basically come together to give the material its final properties. So for making my parts, I'm going to be starting off with this foam core. I'm going to be putting this 
carbon fiber on it and then basically yeah i'm just going to be um, covering it with the resin the final thing i'll end up with will look something like this um, it's not going to be as good looking as if i were vacuum bagging everything because this one actually gives you a really nice surface on the top and um, whereas my surface is going to look something like this it's just going to be all like exposed weaves and stuff but i'm not too concerned about looks i'm just concerned about the functionality of the part so for making the diffuser, I took all the dimensions of the diffuser from the design and I basically just drew it on this um, core cell. This is the foam core that will go in the middle of the carbon fiber. And once everything was drawn, I just cut this foam in these shapes using a paper cutter. So it's fairly easy to cut. All you have to do is just cut one side and then you can actually snap it in half. After this I sanded the edges of the foam because for all the edges of the back of the diffuser I wanted to leave them sharp edges and all the edges of the front I wanted to leave them well rounded because uh, for the best aerodynamics you should be leaving everything at the back like at the trailing edge really sharp so that the air separates at an edge and then all the leading edges need to be round so that um, it doesn't cause too much turbulence or too much air separation if the air is coming at an angle. And after that I just used some hot glue to actually put these different um, foam pieces together. This was actually to form the mold for actually making this diffuser. It actually seems pretty weird right now but later I'll be cutting some more of this foam away so later it will make sense how this will actually form the shape of the diffuser. Once all the foam was put together next I had to start by putting all the carbon fiber in it. So after that I just mixed up a whole bunch of resin and applied it over the carbon fiber. Now I like to use a paintbrush to spread the resin just because it makes it easier but um, if you use a paintbrush just be careful of one thing you'll be left with a lot of extra resin on the surface. So after this what I like to do is I like to use one of those Bondo scraper things and just like scrape all the extra resin away from the surface. Um, of course if you don't want to be left with any extra resin the best way to do it is to vacuum bag and infusion mold it. But like I mentioned earlier in the video for these single layer parts there was a really small amount of difference in weight between um, vacuum bagging and just doing it this way. Once everything was done on one side I flipped the diffuser over and I started off by cutting all this excess foam off. The only reason I left this foam in there was just to well, hold everything together really. Once all the excess foam was cut off, I just used the sander to round off the edge so that the carbon fiber on this side would actually like um, stick nicely to the edge. And after that it was the same process again for this side, just putting the carbon fiber on and then soaking it with resin and then waiting 24 hours for it to dry. So after giving the carbon fiber a day to cure, here's a look at everything. Now the carbon fiber has gone firm. Um, everything is looking pretty solid. So next what I have to do is I have to cut all this extra carbon fiber off. So I'm just left with um, the shape of my diffuser. So for cutting carbon fiber, this is my least favorite part of the job because this is a really messy job. This carbon fiber dust flies all over the place and it's really toxic. If it gets on your skin, it's gonna itch for hours. If, it, if you inhale it, it's gonna stay in your lungs for the rest of your life. So just make sure to wear like a proper mask, um, cover literally every part of your body. And I've also taken the car off the garage so that doesn't get covered in this whole carbon fiber dust. For making sure I cut everything in a straight line, I was just using that steel tube as a guide so that I cut my part in a straight line basically. Um, cutting carbon fiber is fairly easy. It's not, it's a pretty soft material so it's not that difficult to cut, but it's all the mess that it makes which actually is the problem really. Here's a look at the diffuser after all the cutting is done and it's almost incredible to see how light this thing is for like how strong it is. Um, anyways, now that the diffuser is done, next what I have to do is I have to clean up all this mess that is left from all the cutting, then bring the car back in and then actually mount the diffuser on the car, like figure out the attachment points and then drill holes over there. Now I have the car back in and I've already jacked up the car from the back so I can position the diffuser in place and figure out where I have to drill the holes for the mounting points where the diffuser has to mount to the chassis. So for these mounting points, all the places where it has to go on the chassis, those are already figured when I was making the chassis I actually uh, made all the bolting points so you can see two of them like right over there. And then there's another one at the back over here on the crumple zone. So this um, one at the back is actually also going to act as a jacking point. So what I've done is that I've actually taken this, um, well, it's actually a hockey puck. And I've actually, well, machined the hockey puck into this shape so that 
um, this thing will actually bolt up here and then these parts where I've actually machined it from is where the carbon fiber of the diffuser is going to go so it's going to make sure that even when this bolt is fully tight it doesn't put any pressure on the carbon fiber because that's really important because if you directly bolt carbon fiber to steel and you like torque it properly um, chances are that the torque of the bolt will crush the core in your carbon fiber and that's going to be completely useless and it's going to crack the part from there and when i'm going to be jacking up the car this thing is going to be touching against the steel tube so that's how um, all the force is basically going to go straight into the steel tube and not into the diffuser so it's not going to damage the diffuser even when I'm jacking up the car. It is going to disturb the airflow by a little bit because this is going to be sticking below the surface of the carbon fiber by quite a bit but then again I think the added amount of convenience that this thing gives me it's still worth having. And lastly for the corners of the diffuser I'm going to have to add two cables over here because there's no frame sticking out till the corner of the diffuser so I'm planning to just add two cables that are going to like attach this part of the chassis to the corners of the diffuser. I might even leave those ones out for now because um, they're not really necessary for now I just need to add them before I actually take the car to its first track day. So after that I just had to slide the diffuser underneath the car. I used a jack to actually hold the diffuser in place and then marked all the points where the mounting points on the chassis lined up with the diffuser. Then all I had to do was drill a few holes there and also make that cutout for that um, hockey puck thing, the jacking point. And once all that was done, I just put the diffuser back in place and then, yeah, just bolted it in place. Here's a look at the diffuser after everything is mounted in place. And now you can see that almost everything is looking exactly like it was in the design, even the the ground clearance at the back is now the same as what it was on the front so you can see that well it's a pretty low car um, even at the front it's actually that low i was actually measuring the ground clearance just making sure everything is fine and um yeah it's definitely right on like um it's 70 millimeters that's exactly what it was supposed to be um yeah so the diffuser actually sits really well on the car it's exactly like it was supposed to be the clearance between the tire and the diffuser is exactly um, right. Um, I've left this bit of gap over here between the tire and the diffuser because um, I left this because if I want to move to wider tires later on this way I have the option to move to 335 tires at the back. Right now I'm at 315. So now that everything with the diffuser is ordered next it's time to move to making the floor of the car and this is actually going to be a really difficult piece to make because well the floor of this car is massive it has to be one panel that needs to go from the front of that tire all the way to well, the back of the front tire and yeah it's um it's, it's it, this is definitely a really long car um just to give you an idea of the size the wheelbase on this car is 29 30 millimeters so it's actually quite a bit longer than even the wheelbase of the e55 so for making the floor well i kept the shape of the floor really simple for this reason because i knew this would be a really difficult floor to make so it's just a big rectangular panel but it does have a slight curve to it it actually curves upwards from the back so that it actually does form a part of the diffuser the diffuser actually starts literally at the middle of the car somewhere with because of this floor curving upwards so for making this flat floor first i started off by laying all these um, strips of carbon fiber on it on places where i needed to add two layers of carbon fiber to strengthen them that cross in the middle might look really weird right now, but um, where the bolting points go, this is actually going from one bolting point to the other. Once all that was done, I just covered everything with one layer of carbon fiber, and then it was the same process again, just um, applying the resin and then just spreading it with a paintbrush. This time the panel was so big that I couldn't even reach the center part of it, so I had to use this um, stick to actually, well, reach the center and apply resin everywhere on the floor. After giving the resin 24 hours to cure, it was time to flip the floor over and start work on the other side. Now uh, for this um, first side that I was doing, I just kept the floor perfectly flat with the ground. But for the second half, I actually did um, add that curve on the floor because I knew that when only one layer is added to one side of the foam, the foam still remains flexible at the end. But once you add that other layer, that's when the part will take its final shape and you won't be able to bend it anymore. So that's why before applying the second layer I gave the floor its final shape and I curved it from the back just by adding all these woods and shims underneath the floor, um, just making sure it's curved with the same shape that um, the chassis is curved from. And after that it was the same process, just applying the resin and then waiting another day for the resin to cure. Once all the resin was cured it was just a matter of cutting all this excess carbon fiber off so I was just left with the shape of my floor. 
Here's a look at the flat floor, which is actually unflat because it's actually lifted from the back. But um, holy crap, this was a really difficult panel to make because it was so big I couldn't even reach the center part of it. So I did screw up a bit. Um, in that whole center part, there was a whole bunch of resin piled up. So I couldn't do anything with removing that. And also like there's more resin underneath the carbon fiber. You can see there's these things where the thing is lifted from. So there's like big pockets of resin underneath that which is definitely not good for weight but um, everything on the side at least is fine it's just the middle part that i completely screwed up on um structurally the panel is fine like it's still really strong and the only problem is that it's turned out a little heavier than i expected i think because of all that extra resin that is piled up in the center it's um this one weighs about um 11.5 kilograms the diffuser is uh 4.3 kilograms so the diffuser is a pretty good weight but this one is a little heavier than I think what it should have been I was expecting around maybe 10 kilograms for this one but anyways now the next part is to figure out how to actually slide such a big floor <laughs> underneath the car um, which is gonna be a pretty big challenge again because I have really little space in this garage maybe I'll have to do it outside but um, yeah let's give it a try anyways so after moving quite a lot of things around I did manage to make the space to fit the car and the floor in the same garage and then I just had to slide the floor underneath the car after that it was the same process, just holding the floor against the car and then marking all the points where the floor was um, meeting up against all the bolting points that were already on the chassis. And then I had to take the floor out again one final time just to drill all the holes and also make cutouts for um, where I want the jacking points to be. And yeah, then finally just putting the floor back in and then actually bolting it to the chassis. Once everything with the floor was figured, I took the diffuser off one final time just to add these streaks in the middle. Um, these are to divide the different sections of the diffuser so air flows better through the diffuser. Um, if these are not added, what I realized was that the air would try to pile up towards the center of the diffuser. But once you add them, they actually divide the air nicely like um, flowing through the diffuser. But once all that was done, I just bolted everything back in place and that was pretty much it. Here's a look at everything after it's all put together and it's looking super cool. Like my favorite part is just looking in from the diffuser and like um, like just seeing this whole curved floor that literally carries on forever pretty much. Um, right now there's no side skirts on it but the side skirts I will be adding side skirts for sure later on because what I realized um, looking at the numbers was that side skirts make a huge amount of difference on this floor like they literally um, double the downforce underneath the car just by adding skirts just by covering up the sides so it, it's a massive amount of difference that side skirts make um, that's why for sure I'm gonna be adding side skirts later that's why I've left this floor like slightly narrower than the tires if you look at it from the side you can see that it's about like um, two centimeters narrower than uh, the front tire well it's actually slightly less than even two centimeters really but it's good enough to add a side skirt on the side though um, so what I'm thinking for the side skirt is that I want to add really low side skirts that are probably going to be like really close to the road surface even less than the um, ground clearance of the car on other places but I need to make them out of plastic or something something that can easily be replaced later on because uh, chances are they're going to be scraping the track uh, from time to time and they're probably going to wear out really quickly but um, yeah really cool thing about this floor is that if you look at it the diffuser pretty much actually starts from over here this is the part where the floor actually starts like um, angling upwards from and then it's a whole constant curve from here all the way till the back of the diffuser you can see it if you look underneath the car but it's really hard to tell from the side because um, it's well it's really hard to tell from underneath the car too because it's pretty big actually let me just put the car down on the floor so you can see everything on its um, actual ride height and that will actually give you a better perspective of how the floor and the diffuser is actually shaped with um, reference to the like ground okay now i've lowered the car to the ground and now you can really tell this whole like curve on the side so you can see that um, the floor is much higher from over here and then um, at the front it pretty much like gets to nothing at all it's like pretty much there's barely enough space to like slide my foot under here so it's like a whole constant curve and it goes all the way back to the diffuser and the reason I started the diffuser at such an early point um, on the floor is because what I found out was that the further back you take the diffuser it leads to more rear downforce the further forward you bring it it actually contributes to both front downforce and rear downforce so then basically the overbody aerodynamics that I will make like adding a rear wing and um, even front dive planes and stuff that will lead to a bit more front downforce but basically the overbody aerodynamics are going to be more focused towards the rear of the car because obviously it's much easier to get rear downforce by overbody aerodynamics like you can just add a rear wing and that alone equates to quite a lot of rear downforce 
But yeah, this is going to be everything for the floor and for the diffuser. We're actually also talking about um, the things that I left off in the previous video, like this whole transmission shifting thing that I, um, I had to get working in the previous video. Well, since the previous video, what I did was what you've probably already seen what I've done is that I've added that um, 3000 watt inverter and that was actually powerful enough to run the air compressor properly. Um, this was the air tank that I had at the back. And this is also taken from one of those um, 110 volt air compressors. But uh, now the, all, everything on the air system is fine. The car does shift gears, but the only thing that I did not like at all was these reed switches. I think that was a really crappy solution. I should have gone with the potentiometer, which was my actual plan. But for some reason I cheaped out and I went with these ones. And now the problem is that uh, the feedback they give the circuit is really slow. Like um, the gear shift is pretty much already done by the time the circuit realizes whether it's in the right gear or it's in the wrong gear. If it's in the wrong gear, it makes the correction itself. But um, the problem is that I don't want that happening. I want it to be right from the start. So what I'm thinking of doing is that um, I'm thinking of going with potentiometers, mounting potentiometers on both um, axes of the gear lever moving so you can sense the position when it's moving side to side and also sense the position when it's moving forwards and backwards. So once it has full feedback, the circuit will be able to control the gear shifts and everything way better than what it's doing right now. But right now I've put the whole transmission shifting thing on a bit of a hold because there is a lot more other things that I need to do before I can get this car on the track, like uh, making the front splitter, making like a whole cover that covers up all this uh, electronics and like mounting all the gauges and stuff and then finally uh, later this week I really do want to take this car on a dyno like get everything tuned and get a final alignment done and then actually get the car on the track and I really need to get all this done really quickly because uh, winter is approaching really quickly and I really want to get this car on the track before the temperatures get too cold which yeah I definitely don't have too much time left. Also starting the next video, all these Patreon names are going to go up on the side of the car now since now the car actually has bodywork. Um, so they're going to go on the side of the car like right on that bodywork over there. There's actually a few more people that joined in since the last video but I haven't added in the names right now. And actually talking about more names, there was a Miata driver that already joined in. Literally like in the last video I was mentioning that I hope no one picks the name Miata driver because that would suck putting that on the side of the car and I think within the first one hour or something of uploading that video right away there was a Miata driver on the list. The first thing I'm going to do after I track this car is I'm going to go and tell all the Miata drivers out there that my entire Mercedes E55 weighs a good 200 kilogram lighter than all their Miatas and then finally the last excuse they had for owning a Miata would be gone completely. Actually one more thing to add, there was this graphics designer that messaged me on Instagram a few weeks back and he wanted to work on basically improving the design of the car and he's actually come up with this extremely amazing design. It's um, These are just a few teaser images, he's still working on the full thing but he says he's going to reveal the full thing in uh, a few weeks from now. And so I'll link his Instagram down in the description below if you're interested in learning graphics design or car design. Um, yeah, his channel is definitely the right place to follow. But yeah, I really appreciate his time and his work and there's definitely a few design cues that I'm going to be borrowing from that car and I'm um, hopefully trying to implement them on this car. Um, but yeah, this is everything for this video. The next video is going to be about making the front splitter and basically yeah, just uh, making some more body work. So thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one.